possession. Their offensive line features a great six, seven, 340 pounds. He anchors that line. Behind them, Napoleon Kaufman will be the key man today. Number eight, Darius Turner, number 31, starts at fullback. Matt Jones said let the senior start. And Mark Brunel, the left-hander who two years ago was the MVP in the Huskies Rose Bowl triumph, takes over. And what to watch, what he can do with this offense is bring the option at you. They're from the left hash mark, first and ten. Brunel to throw on first down, complete to Damon Mack. Defensively now for the Wolverines, and they're going to line up a little differently. Hutchison on the outside. Aga Khan inside with Henderson, and then also get a rush out of talented Matt Dyson. Greg McThomas moves into the Wolverines starting lineup. Here's the defensive backfield. That backfield has been decimated all year by injuries. Second down, the scripted play is a counter. Watch the fullback. Darius Turner is to get this play. Here it comes, number 31. The hole was there, and Darius explodes for a Husky first down. And Dick Vermeil, the young man, was so happy, he could not wait to tell you about that play yesterday. No, he said, and as you said, Brent, it's a counter all the way. You'll see Big Peters, Peterson number 60, and Lincoln Kennedy leading it through, and you see Darius Turney making a good gain right off the bat on a counter play. Well, happy New Year, Mr. Vermeil, and we welcome Bo Schimbeckler, and Bo, no bleeding Wolverine <laughs> no. colors. We got a lot of friends in Seattle. I I'm totally impartial in this game. <laughs> oh. Brunel drops it off, and Kaufman slips on the reception. They played the Michigan fight song down there on the field, and I was standing next to the boy. He couldn't help himself. He started singing. I mean, he was belting it out. Uh. Bo, here at the top of the game, give everybody an idea of what happened to the defensive backfield in Michigan for Coach Gary Moore. Well, he had two uh, very fine corners that could play man-to-man -man defense, which allowed him to use those eight people inside and bring heavy defenses and blitz. He lost both of them early in the season to injuries, and so they've had to lay off being aggressive in there and have played more standard coverages. Now the no-back look for the Huskies, and Brunel drops it off into the hands of Kaufman. Kaufman broke the first tackle down at the 37-yard line. Pass complete to Kaufman. With no backs in the backfield, that really gives you the opportunity to spread the defense across the field. Focus your attention to the left side of the screen. Tight end cleaning out, running back delaying underneath. He was split out as a wide receiver. No defender in that area. Makes Come a few yards. Brings up third and 11. 18 Ball years. The head coach up in Seattle. Again, Brent, no backs in the backfield, spreading them all the way across the field. Penalty marker down, first flag of the game. Greg McThomas was coming that time. Greg McThomas is starting his first game a little bit anxious. You'll see him right to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, number 41. See him jump across there, again, starting his first game, and it being a Rose Bowl game. Shante Peoples, number three, strong safety blitz, sack. So now it is third down, and defensively, the Wolverines this year have been very good against third down, giving up only 26%. Brent, they went for a period there of 26 third down situations in a row and did not allow the offensive team to convert. Brunel changes the play at the line. The option. This is Kaufman. Won't get the first down. Well stretched out, and Corwin Brown, the hitter in that secondary, pops him out of bounds. This is the number one thing Gary Moeller, the head coach at Michigan, was concerned about, the option, the running of the quarterback. Tough to defense. He'll come down the line of scrimmage, option all the way. Pitch right there. Dudler makes him flip it out there. Now you're flipping it to a guy that can fly, doesn't get the block he needs outside, doesn't get the first down. John Wardell punting for the Huskies. Derek Alexander deep for the Wolverines. Hi. Taking a washing.
Washington hop and Verdell gets one inside the 20 again for the 22nd time this year. Verdell gets one inside the 20 yard line. That'll bring a smile to a coach's face anytime. Now offensively for Michigan Jenkins only a freshman but the key here is Steve Everett the center he missed last year's Rose Bowl because of a knee injury but he's back a lot of talent here for the Wolverines especially Tyrone Wheatley and Elvis Gerback is their quarterback they will operate without the huddle first and ten. Wheatley smacked at the line of scrimmage. See, they're trying to come off man-to-man -man blocking, and in block zone, you'll see up there to the top of your screen that Rob Dougherty, number 70, was laid off the ball, and if you're laid off the ball against a quick defensive team like Washington, you aren't going to make an inch. Gerback pointing to his slot man as Wheatley trots in motion. He'll look toward the left side and incomplete. Third and long now. Defensively for the Huskies. And remember a year ago, they brought talented Steve Entman in here. Now Andy Mason, speed, especially when he gets down. And on the outside, Jaime Fields with Dave Hoffman and James Clifford standing tough on the inside. Walter Bailey's the best cover man. Josh Moore is the only man who will return next year in that secondary is Gary Moeller. Brings his Wolverines to the Rose Bowl for the second straight year. The draw play with Wheatley. First down and Wheatley to the 45 yard line with Parkour hanging on. That was a draw trap play. Good trap like by the offensive right guard, Joe Kokosi. You'll see it right here. Now follow him as he traps across. They show pass protection. See, now watch Kokosi. Here he goes across there. He kicks out. There it is. There's that nice lane up inside. Everybody else playing, de playing defense, and he gets the good game. 23 yards for the talented sophomore. Kokosi gets down in that pit, ready to take on defensive lineman again and it is Wheatley to midfield and parkour the free safety being forced to make too many stops if you had this Husky defense Bernie Leggett the fullback did a real good job that time of cutting the lineman right at the point of attack right on the line of scrimmage Leggett cut him down and allowed him to find a way through there most of the time, you don't want your fullback to cut a man in the hole. You'd like to take him on high and let the running back run off that. Three carries for 32 yards already for that young man who just stepped in motion. Gerback on the short drop, fires complete to the 45-yard line, and Josh Moore is defending Bellman Malvo. And, uh, Bo, as we watch this Michigan team, we see that the attack has opened up more through the year the passing game more in vogue in college football well i think more one back and sometimes no and uh, the ability to throw the ball and i think coach moeller has decided in this game that he's going to open this thing up and he started out that way the ball just across the 45 yard line first and 10 for the wolverines their opening possession ricky powers first carry fumble Waiting for the official signal. Getting up from the bottom of that pile, and he appears to have saved the moment for the Wolverines. David Hoffman, the inside linebacker, number 54 in the middle of your screen, scraping off, reading it all the way. You'll see him flash now. Here he comes. Boom, he gets his hat on the ball, knocks it loose right there. He gets help from the backside. Then he almost gets back in to get it. Now second and long. Straight ahead and penalty flags come flying as DeMarco Farr appeared to be offside. 
Brandon, talking to Gary Moeller about his offensive game plan, he said that they were going to put more emphasis on the quick passing game, the three-step drop, the five-step drop. They were going to run draw traps and then run right at them. Last year, they were sacked uh, like five times in the first half. That, that type of thing by getting rid of the ball quickly and also running a lot of draws and traps. receiver checks in for Michigan and the offside penalty moving the ball to the 41 yard line draw play Wheatley Wheatley to the 37 yard line this will be third and short Jaime Fields making the stop You'll see what I'm talking about, the game plan uh, unfolding in front of us. Draw blocking. Watch the offensive lineman now as they set the show pass. Now freeze it right there. Freeze it right there. You'll see the guard pulling across the trap as they allow penetration. That's what's known as a draw trap. Smith in motion. Gerbeck, pocket holds up. He's got Smith for the first down. Smith is out of bounds inside the Washington 30-yard line. You see, they catch him in a man-to-man -man coverage, and you notice number two, Walter Smith, went in motion one way, then ricocheted and came back. See? And the coverage people could not stay up with him as he went one direction and wheeled around and came back across the formation. A bit of a different start for Gary Moeller and the Wolverines in this game. A year ago, the Husky defense stormed all over Elvis Gerbeck early, but not today. First and ten. Leggett to the 25-yard line. Don James's concern defensively was that the big Michigan offensive line could run right at them James and Clifford control their quickness. See, uh, they're a lighter, quick-moving defensive team, and Don James, that was his number one concern. Here's what I'm talking about. See, they move quick, but to these big guys, see, they get knocked them off, turn their shoulders, and if you can't keep those shoulders squares, you're going to allow a crack up inside. Not a big crack, but they got through it. Look at how big these people are. from behind was Steve Huffman. The young nose man picked it up immediately and hustled back. Boy, the, the guy that made the great play on that was DeMarco Farr, the defensive lineman. He's sitting inside here. Now, yes, it is a screen downfield. It's thrown behind the line of scrimmage so lineman can go, but it, DeMarco Farr reads it and he moves down the line of scrimmage. He, he doesn't make the tackle, but he makes him jump. He can't get going again. Then the defense ricochets back there and makes the play. Good play by DeMarco Farr. There's big DeMarco Farr. He might be the quickest defensive lineman I saw this year. Not a great big guy, but very quick. You know, I talked to DeMarco Farr yesterday, and I asked him about playing on All-American Steve Everett. He said he's played on a lot of big nose guards, but he's never played on one my size that's quick as I am. I'm going to give him some fits. <laughs> there Here's is Everett. Everett. Yeah. There was a... Penalty on this play, and it apparently is going to go against uh, Michigan. Elvis Gerbeck in his final substitution infraction against the offense. Penalties declined. Third down. <laughs> Gary says, "Was that?" Gary said, "Was that loss of down?" That's what he wanted to know right away to see what down it was in this situation. The ball is inside, just inside the 25-yard line, and Michigan needs to get to the 18 for a first down against Don James' defense. Washington has been really tough to convert third down situations in all year, only giving up 25% success against them on third down. Because of their kicking game, you would think that Michigan would be thinking two downs to get a first down in this situation. We'll have to see how that unfolds as Gerbeck has time and throws to McGee incomplete. 
McGee being covered by the linebacker Hoffman that time and the ball was just a little high. Now the ball was thrown a little too high. Maybe the reason it was thrown too high, DeMarco Farr, 75, quick, ricochets back up inside. He's right in front of me now, and he forces that ball to go just a little bit high. Good job again by DeMarco Farr. Well, the Wolverines are going to attempt an Elazovic field goal here, despite the injury that he suffered. If they go through with it, the ball will be put down at the 32-yard line. Good. 41 yards and a morale boost for Michigan early. They came in here very concerned about their kicking game and Peter Elazovic hits his career long one. Provided some spectacular pictures of the Rose Bowl parade here earlier today. What a sight that is to watch the floats being assembled. So now Level will kick it off. And they drive Kaufman deep into the end zone. It'll come out on the 20 yard line. And uh, let's go down below to Julie Moran. Julie. Happy New Year, Brad. You're, you're going to notice the initials TS on all the Washington helmets, and that's in honor of a very outstanding young man. His name is Travis Spring. He was a strong safety at Washington, and he died only weeks after attending the very final Washington Spring practice. And the team voted to dedicate the Rose Bowl and the possibility of three in a row to the memory of Travis Spring. Julie, thank you very much. That's a warm story involving teammates of the late young man up at the... University of Washington. What they want to dedicate to his memory more than anything else is a third straight Rose Bowl triumph. They trail it by a field goal. Brunel hands and Kaufman is pounded by McThomas. Bo Schimbeckler, let me ask you about this young man, Greg McThomas, whom we just saw. His role here today. Well, he started out as a fullback. They moved him to outside linebacker in spring practice. He was hurt early in the season, missed the first four or five weeks. When he came back, they moved him inside. This is his first opportunity to play considerably inside. Well, he flashed that. He saw the gap that time, and he just he just right. ran through. Second and ten. Here's the toss to Kaufman. Daylight. He made the most of it. Ty Law gets him out of bounds. You know, when you have that kind of speed, you can make a little dip to the inside, freeze the pursuit, then get back outside. But pretty good blocking. See, there's stepping around there. They get it locked up there, and they get the blocks out. They got a nice block out there by the fullback. See, and he made that little dip move inside and then bounced outside. That slows down the pursuit. Here's Napoleon Kaufman. Boy, can he fly. He averaged 34 yards a touchdown run in high school. Turner is the fullback for the Huskies. Brunel trying to get away from the pressure and doing what he does extremely well. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line, running for a Washington first down, 17 yards. This was is exactly what Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, was concerned about. This young man's ability to run. See, he gets up underneath. He's flushed. And there's some quarterbacks you're better off not flushing. This guy is one of them. See, he still showed that he might throw the ball. Now he tucks it under and run. Lloyd does not like that aspect of defensing Washington's offense. And Shante Peoples goes to the Michigan sideline. Play fake by Brunel. Receivers are covered. Throws complete to Shelley. Inside the 40-yard line. 19 yards to Jason Shelley. You just cannot give a quarterback that much time on any down situation. And this pattern took at least five or six seconds to develop. He crossed the field all the way across. Shelley, the young Richard freshman, catches the ball, gets it down. Good job by Shelley. But you can't give a quarterback that much time. Shelley caught the fourth completion thrown by Brunel, who is perfect. 
for 23 yards. Actually, Shelley is a true freshman, not a redshirt freshman out of Vallejo. Kaufman to the 36. Lloyd Carr told me that they were going to try to funnel everything back inside to where there's guys in there with a bad mood, bad temper that conduct. They didn't want to get spread out. Force everything back inside. Brunel is a real good athlete. He can both run, throw, very excellent ball handler. He fakes well. See him like that, puts the ball back on the hip. That hides the ball from those linebackers and sometimes the free safeties. Jay Berry comes out in the slot as Turner goes in motion and with no backs. Brunel's got the tight end, Bruner. Bruner to the end one yard line. It's marked down. And Bruner arguing that he had scored his first touchdown of the season. But they'll spot it at the one, a gain of 35. You'll see there's no back in the backfield. Darius Turner went motion to the right side of your screen. He spread the corner wide. They hit the seam down inside that zone defense with the tight end. The free safety did not get over there quick enough to touchdown or on the one-yard line. Now Jones and Turner give Kaufman an extra blocker. As Jones leads the way, Kaufman stops. Kaufman following the two fullbacks into the middle, and Matt Dyson swatted in. Matt Dyson is a quality football player. First team coaches all Big Ten this past year. He's had some injury problems. They've been moving him, playing him in a different position today than he has all year. Part of that game plan to funnel people back inside. Dyson on one side and Hutchinson on the other side. Push him back inside. Brunel gives you an option look down here if you want it also. Straight hand to Kaufman up over the top. Piles into the heart of that defense. And this is some stand being waged by the heart of that goal line defense for Michigan. The defensive line is doing a real good job of getting the offensive lineman down and allowing the linebackers to come back up over the top. I thought he scored from up here. Maybe he didn't, but it looked like it from back up here. We have a pretty good seat. See, they're pushing back up inside there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Close. Now third and goal. Over the top is the fullback. So Darius Turner with the first touchdown of this Rose Bowl. the lead back the lead back carried the ball rather than being the blocker and the tailback carry the ball they give it to the first man through all they needed was six inches he got it Eric Bjornsson the wide receiver and a converted quarterback will hold for Travis Hansen who is from Spokane Washington Hansen makes it a 7-3 Washington lead Team is accomplished. Moeller trying to win his first. And all is right with the world when you hear the Michigan band. The running back coach for Washington there in that last shot, Al Levan. He's coaching the Rose Bowl. You know, he's coaching a few Super Bowls for the Dallas Cowboys. There he is, right? He was, he was with Tom Landry all through those good years. Excellent football coach. is Wheatley. Picks his way. Wheatley to the 32. <laughs> One thing you don't want to do is give him a crack. We were doing the game this year, Brent, when he broke it all away. A long one for the touchdown. 99 yards. 
I think it's important now for Michigan to come back out and, you know, they went down, they got that three-pointer, Brent. They lost a little of the edge now, giving uh, Washington that seven-pointer. But uh, now if they could come back and just fight them back, get back in there, and knock them off the ball a little bit, uh, regain some of that momentum they just gave up. This is Wheatley to the 33 for a couple of yards and a reminder that tonight the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans Miami Alabama 830 right after our Rose Bowl they'll square off for the national championship and here Gary Moeller and the Wolverines are trying to win a Rose Bowl title for the Big Ten which is having a tough tough season. Buckeyes beaten by Georgia earlier in the Citrus. Here, Gerbeck on a short drop throws high to Wheat. And Gerbeck has thrown a couple of balls high, Bo Schembechler. Anything you've noticed with his throwing delivery? Well, you know, when you throw that ball laterally that far, that's a very difficult pass to throw. And he's just a little bit off target. Plus, if he threw it lower, Bo, he, I think Tommy Smith would have picked it up. He well, was coming right, see, right there. He had to get it up right, there a little bit. I, that's a dangerous pass to throw into the flat. You bet it is. Third down. Michigan has to get to the 41 for a first down. Gerbeck sprinting to the left. Blind side gets it off complete to Hayes. Hayes to the 44-yard line and a first down. See, Gary Moeller did a real good job right here just calling that play. They've had problems in pass protection. Now they take it and bring him outside. Now if they want to rush up inside there, hey, the quarterback's not there. He's outside the pocket. He can buy some time. Now at the bottom of your screen, you'll see Mercury Hayes. Now watch him work back to the ball. See him right here? Andy, good job execution. Ed Davis checks in as the tailback, and Wheatley is out. This is Davis behind Leggett, and Davis finds a crack and battles his way across midfield to the Washington 49-yard line. Good-looking run, Dick. Ed Davis, Davis hasn't carried the ball that much this year. He's just a redshirt freshman. But, you know, and he's playing actually out of rotation because the one running back that they had there, Jesse Johnson, is not playing today, and that would normally be his turn to carry the ball. Blocking for Gerbeck. Gerbeck goes to Alexander and he overthrows him. You know, sometimes a quarterback who's got the good strength, good arm, he's got that long body, good leverage, and he's a little pumped up, a little adrenaline flowing there, a little bit more than uh, anybody else. You know, if you're a linebacker, you you can you can use that adrenaline to an advantage. As a quarterback, it can hurt your accuracy. Well, here comes third and three for the Wolverines. Trailing Washington, 7-3. to 2.14 to go, opening quarter. Powers is the tailback in motion. Gerbeck off a of fake to Leggett. has got the middle open. He's got McGee. Touchdown, Michigan. There is a penalty flag down. Hold on, there's a penalty flag. Defense offside. Defense offside. Seth. You'll see what they did here. They ran the back out of the backfield. Now watch the back here. Here he is coming out in motion. You'll see the defensive wide. He hits the seam with a tight end and play action. Excellent call. They're playing run all the way. There goes the tight end. No safety in the hole. Shane Powell go everybody up inside. No safety at all. Touchdown. Excellent call. Excellent design, Bo. Excellent design. That was a great play. You overcommit that defense. Tried to do something like that, you can really be burned with a big play. Well, that's the one negative of the eight-man front. You know, you don't have four guys back there, right. you only have three. Well, they were all right till they went in motion. <laughs> and then they, <laughs> they, got, they got a little up. confused. So Tony McGee with 33 catches on the season and five touchdowns for the Wolverines. And Peter Olazovic, who has kicked his longest field goal of the season, 
to start the Michigan scoring on the day. Now attempting to add point number 10. And the Wolverines lead it 10 to 7. Give him a chance as they drove it deep in the end zone. That was an awfully clever design. You know, I think they call that with knowledge of what the defense was going to be in that third. And a lot of times you have those in game plan. You never get that situation. They got it. Cute it. And Gerbach got it done. This is Barry from the three. Barry to the 25 yard line. As we said at the beginning, the play is the thing. Here you'll see now, if I can quickly explain, you'll see the running back coming out in motion. They were man to man here. He switched, got out here. The linebacker was supposed to pick him up. He didn't do it. Clifford didn't pick him up. See, he read run. Watch 53 right in the middle of your screen. See, he reads run. He doesn't take him right here. You see, he's playing run. No one covering him. The other safety with the three deep was locked up on the other tight end. Touchdown. A career-long reception. 49 yards for McGee. And a first down handoff to Kaufman. Slides through that opening to the 29-yard line. Every time we've seen him play, Brent, he has played very, very good football. When you average 6.5 yards a carry through the year and 5.9 for your career, you're doing something pretty good. We have an injured offensive lineman down. Appears to be Peterson. Peterson's the youngest of seven children. Born in Greenock, Scotland. Long ways from home right now. Bit of a new look here. Both Bell off a play fake under pressure, steps away from Stanley. And he'll throw this one away. He got away from the charge by Stanley. There is a penalty flag down at the 30-yard line. It was nice to have the opportunity yesterday to sit and talk to the officials out here in the field, Brent, when they were getting their pictures taken. Illegal receiver downfield. Coach Bo, is he as intense as, as you were as a football coach, Coach oh, Moeller? Every bit. Uh, no, 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 you're telling uh, me the truth. I, I'm, uh, I was calm and collected compared to Gary. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to compliment him on the design of that last third and three play, though. That was well conceived offensive football play. Jim Beckler, you, I, I used to trust everything you did. I believed every word you said. When I was a young coach, and yeah. I'd go to your clinics and listen to you speak as an older coach in the football. You know? <laughs> Third down for the Huskies. They're coming They're after coming. Him. Brunel steps away from Dyson Peoples behind him, and he is pushed out of bounds near the first down marker. Mobility. Let's see where they spot this one on that far side. Mobility at the quarterback position. When you have a quarterback that can make you miss back there, Dyson had him, number 91, had him back there. Didn't come under control. Watch 91, left-hand corner of your screen. Here, that's Matt Dyson. See, now he should be a little more balanced right there. See, a better athlete at that quarterback position. You've got to always be aware of that. Look at him go for that mark. And he did just get it. Just enough for a Husky first down.
you know, this guy's got all the tools as a quarterback, Brent. You know, we were talking about his ability to throw, his ability to run the option, his ability to scramble. He was a 3.9. That's 1B grade in high school in four years. Pretty smart young man. Bjornsson, the slot receiver to the right. Brunel on first down, and his receiver slipped. Jones, the fullback, slipped at the 37-yard line. That was a nice story that Matt Jones, number 22 on your screen, was telling us yesterday. Remember, Brent, he actually is the starter, but he asked the coaches if Darius Turner, number 31, could take his place because he's a senior, and they're very close friends, and he thought the senior should start. There's Darius Turner, who did start the football game and is a good football player, but it was the starter, Matt Jones, that asked the coaches to put him in there. Bjornsson. In motion, the draw to Kaufman, and Kaufman well defended by Tony Henderson. Tony Henderson can do that playing inside. He, he came into the ball game with five tackles for a loss. He's a quick guy. He's also very strong at the point of attack. Also an outstanding student. I think they ought to, you know, in those rundowns, they ought to uh, get back into that, that option because I know that Michigan is really concerned about it. Kaufman, eight carries, 11 yards. Michigan's defense doing an excellent job against the talented tailback. Brunel throwing under pressure, and there was no receiver standing no, he's there. Call out. There was no receiver there. He has to call it. There was nobody, as you said, there. You see they're loading up, game plan to put pressure on them. Here you can see the defensive front right here. They're spread across six guys right there. They run the stunt right up and freeze it right there. See, these two people cross charge. They came like this. They didn't pick it up properly. See right there, you see 97 Hutchinson getting in there. He should have been picked up properly in there. He wasn't. That's why he was so clean inside there. Boy, that's a big penalty because in the exchange here now, you know, good field position after this punt, even if you don't get a punt return. That one moves the ball back inside the 20. The down marker flips to fourth, and the Huskies will use Verdell with Alexander set to give the Wolverines what they hope will be excellent field position. He hangs it high. One hands it, a fumble, Huskies recover at the 49 and a penalty flag is down yeah they interfered with his right to catch a football they didn't give him that few feet that they're supposed to give him right there they hooked his arm the flag was thrown right away good officiating he got, he got blocked. you'll see it right there see him right there he bumped right in me alexander did not have a chance to you've got to give him room to catch even if it's not a fair catch you must give him room to feel that ball one more look at that same play. Derek Alexander, good concentration, reaching to take the ball. And that's 22. Matt Jones, now they might say that uh, Matt Jones was blocked into him. Uh, to... Let's see what they rule. The Michigan player was running Jones in to the receiver. Now, an official might miss that, okay? That would be easy to do if you're looking at the purple jersey. But it was fairly clear on that replay. Watch it that the white jersey had sealed up toward Alexander and he had no place to go. Interference against the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. 15 yards. 15 yard penalty. First down. Take a look we at this from one down, the end zone. Now we might get a little better shot right in the middle of your screen now. You see right here in the right hand corner. Now here it is down here happening. This is a huge break for Michigan. That's a good call. That's a good call. See, he has 30 yards in penalties, 15 on the uh, guy downfield, and now 15 here. Dick, I, I 
have to disagree. I don't think Jones had any place to go on the play, to tell you the truth. Yeah, that, I thought it was one of those accidental things. Yeah, you still have to give him I, room, and if he was frankly, actually blocked into him, I thought right. Alexander's judgment was atrocious. No. When he uh, came uh, up uh, on that ball. Bo Schimbeck, how would you I, see it? I agree. I, I, I think Alexander should have got out of the way of the ball. However, I'm not sure that Smith was trying to block it. See, there it Smith is right, is right here. Freeze it right there. Freeze it right there. Yeah, he should have right pushed. Here. He should have pushed Smith out of the way. See, he's not That's trying to block or anybody. He's just trying to not clip him from behind. Yeah. Here he is. But his left arm. Uh, yeah. You know, we could go on and on. But yeah. his left arm down at his side indicates to me that he's trying to get out of there as best he can. Regardless, you know, regardless, there was contact made. It certainly impacted the. But the interesting thing that happens on it is that after the penalty, Michigan gets a first down. They get the ball. It's a huge turnaround in this Rose Bowl. The ball is now inside the 40, and it's Gerback going to go for it on first. He's got Alexander out of bounds. Quarter of the Rose Bowl comes to an end. Michigan leading Washington by three, ten to seven. Seven over Washington. The Huskies trying to win for the third straight time. That would be a first. Michigan has other ideas. Smith in motion. Wheatley. Nowhere. Tommy Smith came up from his rover position to take him on first. Well, they play him, as you said, a rover. They play him as a true strong safety. They play him as a safety safety. Now they walk him up and play him as a defensive end at that position on the line of scrimmage. You'll see him at the top of your screen right now, left-hand corner of your screen, number 20, reverse, reverse angle. Now he comes right down the line of scrimmage. That prevents the cutback. Smith pressing again at the line and then backs off. Gerbeck gets time. Gerbeck to Alexander. Incomplete with Bailey covering him. You know, Elvis got back there, set up, and then moved himself. He had no reason to flush. He's been knocked down a few times already. He should have set right up there, paused, and let the ball go. There was no reason for him to flush. There's no one around him. See, he had to set, reset, and throw, and it was just enough to not get it there accurately enough for the completion. When you have time, you must take the time to set up properly and throw the ball. Boy, Coach Moeller sure not playing it close to the best. Third and ten, he's going for the big one. And a penalty flag with the clock running down. Red ball. <laughs> so they're back Chris Stapleton up five yards and hope that he did not punt one into the end zone for a touchback. This makes it a little bit easier for him to lay it inside that 10 yard line. Yeah. He puts the ball back on the 43-yard line. Kaufman standing back at the Husky 11. Oh. <laughs> back him up 50 yards and let him go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he hadn't hit one like that all year, and now he hits one up. He <laughs> 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 can't believe it. <laughs> Happy New Year, young man. <laughs> From Ilbera. Stat right here is time in possession. Michigan less time and more points, more good plays. Now Brunel hands to Jones and Hutchison. Takes him on at the 23-yard line, and down we go to Julie Moran. Julie? Well, Brent, I'm here with a former Husky and a number one draft choice for the 49ers, Dana Hall. And Dana, you were here, won the Rose Bowl last year, and now you have a shot at the Super Bowl. I'd say it's been a pretty good year for you. Yeah, so far so good. You know, last year was a very exciting experience for me, winning the national championship, being down in the Rose Bowl. 
and now to have the opportunity to play in the playoffs and make them to the Super Bowl is uh, very exciting. But you had a pretty tough assignment covering Desmond Howard last year. Yeah, it was tough, but uh, old Desmond only came out of the game with one catch, and uh, I think a lot had to do with it. he didn't respect me at all, and I think he does now. So can Washington win three in a row? Well, I hope so. It's, uh, you know, it's tough right now as they're having a tough time out there, but if the, if the offense can get rolling, I think we can get this one. All right, good luck in the playoffs, and back up to you, Brent. Yeah, thank you very much, Julie. That is certainly a, a badge of distinction for that defensive backfield of a year ago. They came in uh, determined to shut down Desmond Howard. If you look at the game tapes from the coaching angle, they were yelling and pointing, and they dogged him all over the field in that uh, in that Rose Bowl triumph of a year ago. But this is a more versatile Michigan attack this year. More weapons. Washington will have to play at its best now to come from behind again. Brunel's option. This is Jay Berry being tried at tailback. And you have got to be impressed with the way the Wolverine defense is hitting. Morrison has been in on a couple of plays. Maloney is out there. And Dyson. Dyson did an awfully nice job that time because he went down the line of scrimmage, forced the quarterback to pitch, and then broke and sprinted down the line of scrimmage as when it was in on the tackle. Nice job of playing defensive end. A year ago, Michigan punted 10 times. This year, it is Verdell and the Huskies who are being forced to repeatedly punt in this game. This is his third already. That's a return type punt, real low. If they can get to it, can't get to it. I think the coaches told Alexander to stay away from it when you had yeah. good field position. Yeah. He was, was a... headed for the locker room, <laughs> folks. That's a 38 yarder. <laughs> 44 yard line. Bo Schimbecker, your observations about the two quarterbacks are Elvis Gerbeck and Mark Brunel. Well, I think in the case of Washington, Brunel is a tremendous threat outside the pocket. The more he scrambles, the more it's going to hurt Michigan. In the case of Gerbeck, he is not a... He's got to stay in there if he's going to throw the ball. Well, here is second down. This could be a throwing situation for the Wolverines as Gerbeck checks quickly with Wheatley. Leggett goes out. No backs. Short drop. Once Wheatley almost intercepted, Josh Moore had it in his hands. I think he was surprised. He was, you know. And Brent, you said short drop, which was true. He set short, but if you set short, you should unload the ball quickly because if you don't, now watch right here. He'll go back and set short. If you don't get ball rid of the ball quickly, the rush gets to you. You can't throw it accurately. Sometimes you can't see either. See, they're coming after. You got to get rid of it just a little quicker. Almost intercepted. Third and seven. Tony McGee standing up as a tight end. Wheatley. Wheatley explodes. They won't catch him. Back. Talked early in the game about the draw trap. Here it is again. Now Skeen, the big offensive lineman right here, will pull and trap across. Now watch this as he pulls across. Excuse me, it was the other way around. Here it goes. Flopped it on me. There it is. He hit that trap hole going. Great block by Doug Skeen. Good block to seal it off as well. Take another look. Here now, 72. See him right there. He turns it up. They rush so hard. He didn't even have to block. Good blocks downfield. Great speed. State 100 meet, meter champion. Touchdown. Bo Schembechler, I want 
you to tell our audience about the conversation you had this year with Tyrone Wheatley. Well, uh, uh, the backfield coach asked me to talk to him, and I merely asked him whether he wanted to be a track man playing football or a football player running track. And uh, he told me he wanted to be a football player. I said, well, then you have to start to practice like one and play like one, because he hadn't done it up until then. <laughs> he looked like a football player on that run, didn't he, folks? Now, here's another football player. Hoffman needs to respond. Out to the 25. And a reminder that we've got more football coming your way tomorrow. The NFL playoffs will begin right here on ABC. At noon, doubleheader action in game one. Frank Gifford, Al Michaels, Dan Deerdorf. They'll have Washington and Minnesota. And meanwhile, Dick, you and I'll pack up after the Rose Bowl, go down to San Diego. It'll be the Chargers, a wonderful story against the Kansas City Chiefs. A doubleheader coming your way tomorrow on ABC. And the blimp, the Goodyear blimp, will just come right down the coast with us. We look forward to those pictures of San Diego. Now, first and ten. Turner, and it is a swarming Michigan defense up by 10, led by Greg McThomas doing the job. Real good down line play there, too, Brent, by Buster Stanley, number 60. He held his point right there on that counter play. They tried to double him. He held his point. Then good flow, good pursuit from the linebackers. Good job by Buster Stanley. We have an official timeout right now. Washington is being held to less than three yards a rush. They have gained 47 yards in 16 carries against this Michigan defense. Well, Michigan's been tough against the run all year, only giving up 89 yards a ball game. Boy, that's darn good run defense. They're almost impossible to get outside of with the basic normal type play, the eye toss, the sweep. It's tough. We have got an official injured down here on the sideline. That's the umpire, John Bradley. And watch the bottom left hand side of the screen. He is in that pit area. And an umpire, you can see, he just got brushed there at the side up high. That was Corwin Brown, number 20, accidentally coming alongside, brushing that side of the face. Brunel on the roll. Brunel's got it into Turner's hands, and Turner battles his way to the 31-yard line, and Matt Dyson on the tackle. See, now, the umpire is going to leave this game, which means that the crew will adjust on the field right now. Uniform on the play. The ball's at the 32-yard line, where it'll be third... So one of the linesmen will come in and operate for the time being as the umpire. Now the umpire, you can see he moves right in behind the linebackers there on the inside. That's the linesman who for the time being will be the umpire. Now on third down, short drop Brunel fires and a diving reception by Joe Kralik. And he's injured on the catch. He did an excellent job of diving out there to get that one. I mean, he sacrificed his body. And these are these are tough, tough, tough throws. Good throw. Look, and I watch him reach right here at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Look and go out there and make that catch. Heck of a job. Good concentration all the way. Giving the Huskies a first down at the 36-yard line. Trying to get something happening here before the intermission. A fake to Kaufman. Stanley's coming. Brunel steps away from him the run he'll go deep it's Shelley inside the five Shelley, touchdown Washington he crossed and broke the plane of the end zone Free safety, number 20, you'll see on your screen here, was right where he ought to be. You'll see him come in here. He just misjudges it. Look at him. He's looking at the ball all the way. Now, he goes for it. He should go for it. It's highest point right there, but he didn't get there quite quick enough. Excellent job by Shelley.
Dallas Henson adds the extra point. I want you to watch down by the goal line. As we see the replay, did he have possession? We'll come back and take a look. He's back in the end zone, and he will wisely kneel down. Wheatley had to run in and quickly say, take a knee. Don't try to come out. So credit young Wheatley with telling Hayes to get down. Now, let's take a look. And did he get across the plane of the gold egg? Well, he definitely had the football right here. Now you'll see, watch the lines right, freeze it right there. You can see the line is here. Now the ball is out right here. The, the judgment has to be made by the line judges, the side judges there, whether he had the ball and broke the plane. It's really questionable. It could be Michigan's ball going the other way. Well, Law pounced on the ball, and if he didn't break the plane, it should have been a touchback. Michigan ball right here. But the Huskies get a badly needed touchdown. And now Gerbeck off that short drop fires to his tight end who was pounded at the 25-yard line. McGee hit by Fields. See, they came up that time with two tight ends and two flankers, and I think they're going check with me to what they think is the weakness of the defense. We have a man down. That is Walter Bailey. He is their best cover man. You can just listen to this pop. Well, Tony McGee's 245 pounds hitting Walter Bailey at 185 pounds. Gerbeck looks the other way and gets it into Wheatley's hands. Wheatley breaks a couple of tackles before they finally swarm him down at the 26. You know, he does show some shake and break, not like a track man would be playing football, more like a football man that can run as fast as track people. You see him shake and make a miss there? If you like had you Bo Schembechler tell you you were a football player, you wouldn't be a track man either. <laughs> no, I don't think he'd give you much of a choice. Now, you watch 91 to the left side of your screen. Hoffman come down the line of scrimmage. You'll see him appear from the right side of your screen. Now, watch him. He shakes. He makes a miss. He comes comes back here comes Hoffman he makes him miss Wheatley's in motion Gerbeck Gerbeck with plenty of time and a diving reception by Alexander at the 32 yard line a tremendous job by Alexander covered by the coverage pattern doesn't develop right away he keeps working back to the quarterback until the ball gets here. Excellent job by Alexander. Giving Moeller and the Wolverines a fresh set of downs. You'll see what I mean right here. He's rolling out. He's rolling out. See now, now watch to the left side of your screen. See him working back to the quarterback. You can read his numbers right there. Excellent job. Good coaching. One of the big playmen for Michigan this year. Defensively, the Huskies get ready as Wheatley comes in motion and Gerbeck rolls to the right and he's going to put it up deep for Alexander. He's out of bounds. Incomplete. It'll be second and ten. More covering him. They're really going after. That was a double move. They went out, pushed the defender up, made a little out move, then starts down going deep. You'll see the ball just thrown over the outside shoulder. Let's see if he gets the foot down. He gets it down on the line. Good call by the officials. Second and ten for Wolverine. There's Josh Moore, just a sophomore from Torrance, California. Most improved defensive back in the spring, demonstrating why he won that award by being in good coverage position on that play. Wheatley to the 33 yard line. Clifford cleaning up. Pacoa up fast from his safety position. Clifford also a minor league baseball player with Seattle and uh, not quite sure what he wants to do. He'll get a look by the NFL. He's a very solid blocker. I should say he shed blocks very well to make the tackle. That is the key point that the Washington coaches have always made about Clifford. He underwent major knee surgery a couple of years ago, and he's an outstanding inside linebacker. You can see the protective brace that he wears on that right knee. Timeout. Timeout. 
as the clock was running down instead of a penalty Gerbeck effectively took the timeout and he'll come over to the Wolverine sideline Michigan by a field goal here in the Rose Bowl seven minutes to go in the first half Alexander's in motion and there was movement on the left side of the offensive line Jenkins may have moved and let's go downstairs to well, Brent, there's news for Washington and for Walter Bailey. As you can see, they're taping his left shoulder right now. He has a slight separation in that left shoulder. And at this point, they're saying he's possible for the second half, but they're giving us no definite word on that. Julie, thank you. And, uh, Dick, that would be a blow to that defensive backfield. You darn right it would, because he is their best coverage guy. You see in that scheme where they play an eight-man front, two corners and one safety, well, there's a lot of man-to-man -man, man -man coverage, and you need quality people to play that defense. And Reeser. Now, shoulders quite a burden. The Wolverines will attempt to exploit him before the afternoon is over. Alexander in motion toward that side. Gerbeck is looking in that direction. Gerbeck fires underneath to Smith. And he really threaded the needle on that toss. Fields and Hoffman were there with coverage. It is short of a first down, and Michigan will punt. See, he wanted to go to the tight end and, and the, the motion wide receiver and get the first down with that one. He couldn't get a good coverage. He couldn't get there, so he comes to his third receiver, Stanley, who ran a crossing pattern. But good defense by Hoffman prevented the first down. Lousy punt. And Kaufman will let it roll. Huskies get the ball at the 29 yard line after that 33 yard effort. So when the young man should drop the short one inside the 10 he booms it out of the Rose Bowl and when you need that strong <laughs> leg it's no wonder you guys get prematurely gray as coaches. So what else is new. <laughs> They'll do it to you every time. <laughs> well umpire John Bradley has received a couple of stitches down below and checks back into the game this crew is from the Western Athletic Conference they're tough guys they've been up to Laramie and Fort Collins they know how to handle things down here of course Bo he was always an officials guy Huskies first and ten from their own party. first and ten now for the Huskies down by a field goal here's the fullback Turner for the 31 yard line Dick, Michigan's defense is doing an outstanding job against the run here in this half. They've done an outstanding job against the run all year, but I came in thinking, well, maybe because, you know, there haven't been many great running teams in the Big Ten this year. That would distort their defensive stats. But, hey, they are sound on defense against that run especially. 17 carries, 49, 49 yards. Big Lincoln Kennedy over there on the left side had his hands full with Staley. Brunel sprints out to the right. Brunel is taken down at the 31 yard line. That was Steve Morrison, number 36. He learned from Eric Anderson, and he is an outstanding inside linebacker. See, the thing he did that time, Brent, is he came to balance, meaning he kept his feet apart, he bent his knees, and he went and made the proper tackle. You know, it's when you do that, it's tough to for that offensive player to make you miss. third and long one of the things about Morrison with those quick feet he can also drop back into pass coverage better than an awful lot of inside linebackers in college football Brunel under pressure steps away from where great block to give him more time Brunel goes long complete at the 14 yard line Mark Brunel to Damon Berry Damon Berry did an excellent job running down the field, looking back inside. He sees the ball going to be outside, and he goes ahead and turns all the way around. Damon Berry did a real nice job. Now watch to the left side of the screen. Scramble, he came to blitz. A good, good mobility. Gets outside the pocket. Now watch down top of your screen, left-hand side. See, now freeze it right there. You see he's looking back inside. Now watch what he does as the ball comes down. He makes an X. That's Willie Mays playing center field there, Brent. Excellent job. Boy, that ball almost popped out there, too. As bad as they have been running, that's how good they've been passing. 10 of 12 for 188 yards, and Brunel has 
used eight receivers here in the first half. Kaufman now looking for daylight to the 13-yard line. You'd almost get the feeling, if you're a Husky fan, that you'd be better off throwing on first down, wouldn't you? You know, and Michigan's doing a good job of mixing up what they their normal basic defense that they play most of the year, and then their game plan defense that they're playing in this ball game that they haven't been playing. And, and it really throws you off when you come in prepared for something and detail your preparation, and all of a sudden, they're playing something different. Brunel trying to outrun Morrison fumble out of bounds Washington ball but Morrison made a big play against Brunel excellent job by Morrison now here he is just follow him as the linebacker now good job it's the down the line option now see if what he stays in position see he doesn't want to overrun it keeping his shoulder square as he sees his lane he attacks makes a play well done Third and a long for the Huskies. They need to get inside the five-yard line. So he must have 14 yards or it'll be field goal time for Travis Hansen. Brunel straight back. Throws. Touchdown. Brunel. reception here it is in the Rose Bowl Hutchinson gets some pressure on him but you'll see him down the bottom end corner of your screen right in right there thrown right where he had to throw it right outside away from Pat Maloney the inside defender excellent job take another look at that you'll focus your attention to the right side of your screen right over here you'll see it's man-to-man -man coverage you're gonna blitz it the safety right here. Now freeze it right there. See, Maloney is working over to pick him up. He's already inside, so he sticks him and hits to the corner. See, now I didn't give him much of a stick, but enough. See, and the ball is thrown properly. Grabs him by the jersey. Excellent job. Safety's not used to being in man to man coverage. <laughs> They're happy in Aberdeen, Washington today. <laughs> Three minutes and 14 seconds left in the first half. Travis Hansen will kick off for Washington. Lead lead on Hayes, the lead you know, Bo, that's a case of a safety trying to disguise his coverage just a little too long and not getting in a good right. position. Well, he let the end get outside of him. Yeah. Hayes will down it again in the end zone. Well, coming up at halftime. Here's Wheatley. Hole on the left side. Wheatley for a first down and 20 yards on the run. Line play this time by the two. Offensive lineman, you'll see they're pulling from the right side of your screen. They get the kick out. They get the lead up through. You see big number 70 there working his way up through there. That's Rob Dougherty. That gives that guy room. You give him room, boy, you have problems. Already 120 yards rushing on 10 carries for Wheatley. Mason was coming. Alexander can't get the handle, but credit the pass rush that time. 
Yeah, had that blitz coming. Old Andy Mason, number 13, coming. He had pressure all the way. They were trying to run that wide receiver screen, saying he couldn't. There's Fields getting it off, getting it to him. And, and you want to get those people upfield on those kind of plays if you can, but you don't want to get the quarterback <laughs> killed either. Powers checks in along with Davis giving Michigan a couple of tailbacks in this formation. And it's Davis from that fullback look, and it did not fool Hoffman. Hoffman was ready, and he took him down at the 42-yard line. You know, that's the same type of play, the draw trap that they've broken twice, one for the long run. This time, Mr. Hoffman is keying it all the way. Now watch the trap blocking. See the offensive lineman? They show pass they come across trap he's frozen on it right now there he is he's waiting for him to get there good job by Hoffman so you got it twice but you're not going to get it three times two minutes and 22 seconds left here in the first half so the holder for field goals loosening up on the sideline he certainly is not getting ready to come into the <laughs> game as a quarterback when you've got Todd Collins over there as your backup and and Gerbeck here on a four point shootout third down Smith the pocket holds up Gerbeck goes to Toomer and he overthrows it Reeser had the coverage and Michigan dearly wants to test Walter Bailey's replacement. You know, I really think they call that anticipating man-to-man -man coverage. They went zone coverage. Tough to run a deep corner against a three-deep zone. I'm surprised that they didn't lay off man for the down underneath that deep corner. See, not much of a chance to get a corner pattern on a three-deep zone. That was Shane Park. Oh, you caught the two, and that was 21 coming to help out from that zone. Now it is Stapleton. And Kaufman will let it roll dead at the 18-yard line. 40-yard punt. mad at himself there, Brent. Kaufman's mad at himself. He, uh, he shrugged his, threw his head back there. He should have run up there and, and fielded that ball. 11. Stepping to the right side, and again, nothing doing with that running game as Aga Khan, Ninaf Aga Khan, who was born in Baghdad, makes the stop for the Wolverines. He did a real good job uh, of taking on the offensive tackle, Tommy Gallagher, and just knocking him back almost right there and just waiting for the ball carrier to get there and made the play himself. Didn't need much help. Nice job. So there is big Lincoln Kennedy, drama major. He'll take the spring off to go to the NFL Combines, then he'll come back and get his degree. Trying to open the hole that time for his tailback, and Buster Stanley stepped in there defensively, and timeout is called. Big Lincoln at 325 pounds. He says he's working on keeping his weight down, but look at this agility. Look at this agility. Good footwork, good hand placement. Did his job, didn't he? Yeah. He can't block all 11. <laughs> Third round. Battling. See, in Washington, comes back with the same kind of play. They run the quick trap there with Andrew Peterson trapping across the ball. For a moment, like the ball went down. And he might have lost it, and an offensive lineman was forced to pounce on this ball. Let's take a look at this. Real quick trap. You see him pull right there. He gets a kick out block. There it is. He gets hit the point. Now he... Ra yeah, he does fumble that. Get comes out. Now you Fortunately, Pete Pearson picks it up, number 71. Aaron. Just in case they got a look. And Verdell gets a Washington bounce, and Alexander will let it roll quietly to the 20 yard line with 48 seconds to go. That's a 53 yard punt. An experienced punt returner like Derek Alexander should have picked that ball up. He wasn't threatened. Probably cost him at least 12 yards right there. 47 seconds. 
Michigan doesn't have any timeouts. Forty-seven seconds to go with Gerbeck. Alexander, Smith, Toomer, and Wheatley. They're all on the field now for Michigan here at the end of the first half. Movement by the right tackle. That'll cost the Wolverines five yards. It's just a little quick. Mason was there along with Clifford. Coach Moeller and talking to him about his concerns. What did he say? My concern is Brunel and the option. The option has been defensed. I thought they've he was done a most good job. concerned about you finding out his starting lineup. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think he learned that from the coach Bo standing right here too. You know, he wasn't real easy to find out the lineup from him either. <laughs> To McGee at the 24-yard line with Hoffman all over the tight end. Two big plays for the Wolverines here in this half, and it was McGee who caught a touchdown pass from Gerbeck and Wheatley who exploded around midfield for Coach Muller. And time two. Leggett and nowhere to rumble against the Washington defense. Mike Lustig hitting him with 23 seconds to go. James Clifford at the bottom of the pile for the Huskies. And the touchdown stands. He still would have been inside the five yard line, wouldn't he? There's a high punt. Shelley. Shelley to the 44 yard line. Jason Shelley to the seven yard reach. Now that's 38 yard punt. And the final 13 seconds here of the first half. Number 10, Todd Collins, you saw on your screen there. Brent, he was the quarterback the day we did the Michigan game this year against Houston, and he played awfully well. Good future at the University of Michigan. Here he is. Did a great job uh, in filling in for the two games that Gerbach could not play. 65 complete, seven touchdowns, touchdowns and, and only three interceptions. That's a good touchdown to interception ratio. Brunel to Shelley. First down at the 40-yard line. See, they don't have any timeouts. You just got to get up there. They don't think they're going to get the play. They're just moving the chains. The clock stopped. They've got four seconds left on that clock. I think you'll just snap it and down it. Oh, they got to go with four seconds. You got to go with the clock having stopped here on the first down. Yeah, might as well. He's got to go throw it into the end zone. Yeah, he's, see, he wants to get a good huddle call, Brent, and you get a good play and then take one last shot. And good definition by everybody. One second in the first half. He's only got the one play either way, and he wanted to get good definition. Nowhere, nowhere close. And the first half comes to an end. <laughs> And we'll return with more after this message and a word from our ABC station. Carries for Michigan. Michigan trails it by four points. Travis Hansen from Spokane to kick it off. Hayes back deep. They've been kicking away from Wheatley. They have been putting it in Hayes' hands. And he is stunned at the 12-yard line by... With a great play for the kick. He's a backup inside linebacker that's played well when he's had the opportunity to play behind James Clifford. That was an excellent play. Good speed. And got in there, knifed his way through. Nice job of covering a kickoff. Nice way to start the second half. Set the tempo for the defense with a special teams play. Picozo, Doherty, Everett, Skeen, Jenkins, the starting offensive line. 
on the field for the Wolverines. Leggett and Wheatley are the running backs. Toomer and Alexander the wideouts. Wheatley with a crease. Wheatley to the 35, 40. Wheatley could explode. He's a former state sprint champion. He'll score. Woo! <laughs> Pretty fast, too. 12 carries, 208 yards already. Wow! Tyrone Wheatley is well on his way to a Rose Bowl record. Charles White of USC against Ohio State in 1980 rushed for 247. This run gives Wheatley 208 yards on the day. Elizabeth adds the extra point, and now Michigan regains the lead. He's going, he's got a break in the pass midfield with Dwayne Ware catching him from behind. Talk about people with speed. Here he is. He's done this before. He's been an excellent kickoff returner through his career. This kickoff, the ball was up in the air and hung up there. Now he sees the bench. He gets a kickoff block to the right of your screen. See, he has that little shake and break inside. Safety overran it. Fortunately, they have speed in the safety position come from the right and puts him down. Otherwise, it's a six pointer. And Washington will start at the Wolverine. 45-yard line. <laughs> Brunel on first down. The swing pass to Matt Jones, the fullback. Dyson takes him out of bounds at the 39-yard line. We're going to take a look at that touchdown play. Plays don't always go where they're supposed to go. It was supposed to go over here. It didn't go there. Big Dougherty is pulling to trap here. It didn't go there. DeMarco Farr slants down inside. Go ahead, run it. Slants down inside. He sees the whole backside right here, and he just keeps going straight ahead. He says, heck, it's nicer right here. Now you can see how valuable speed is. He's in between two safeties. They can't collapse outside in on him. Too much speed. Barry is the tailback. Turner, the fullback. Barry behind Turner. And Stanley rides him down with any yard as Tyrone Wheatley, who won three track events while in high school in the state of Michigan. The 100, the long jump, and also the high hurdles. He is an extremely talented athlete who checked in a little bit heavier this year. And mark it down to Tyrone Wheatley going into next season will be one of the most celebrated backs in college football. And we did the uh, third game of the season and he wasn't a starter. Third and short. Turner for the Husky first down. Peoples couldn't hold on. And he blasts his way to the 31 yard line. Really got his pads down into the tackler that time and really fought his own way for that first down. Brand Good individual effort by Darius Turner. Well, the contest between Wheatley and Kaufman has been no contest so far, has it? Kaufman looked good on that 47 yard kickoff return, but Wheatley headed for a possible Rose Bowl rushing record. He already has the longest run now for a score. On first down, Brunel driving the Huskies. Steps away from pressure. Gets past Dyson for a first down. What a wonderful save by Brunel. Boy, I'll tell you this. Uh, this guy is a competitor, a bright competitor. Good concentration downfield. He wants to throw. Look at those eyes. He's checking out that defense. He's calling his audible. Probably a dummy audible in this situation. He gets back. He's reading right now. 
See, he's looking for the second receiver, third receiver. Now he's back as a ball carry. He keeps the ball in the left hand in the position that he can go ahead and throw. Now he tucks it under and becomes a running back. Damon Berry is the wide receiver. Brunel to left. Brunel handling to Kaufman, and Kaufman steps his way to the 17-yard line. Washington's been very good inside the red zone this year. They've been down there 40 times and scored 34 times, and, and 28 of them were touchdowns. Right, that's 70 percent. That's a, a very good percentage. Good coaching. Of football inside that 20-yard line. Big toss. Brunel off a beautiful fake hits Bruner. See, he faked the toss like you said, Brent, and that pulled the strong safety who has support. See, he's got to come up there and be in a contained position. He fakes the toss, pulls the safety up in there. See, fakes the toss, good extension right there. That pulls the safety up, play and run. He throws his tight end pattern in where the strong safety would normally defend. Good execution. See, the strong safety concentrate on that tight end. He should be reading them on those kind of defenses. Here's Kaufman. Touchdown, Washington. The big offensive line that time showed that they can come off the ball. Not as big as Michigan, but they're strong. They came off. No penetration allowed. Touchdown. Offensive line. See, they come off the ball here, and all man-to-man -man blocking there. Good front. He picks up the linebackers. Awfully good job by Jim Neville in the middle of your screen, the center, and they get up behind him. Hanson. Big is good. We've had five lead changes in this Rose Bowl. This is a wonderful game. Hayes comes out. Butler there again, making the stop. Murphy Hayes is a true freshman from Houston, Texas. He's rated the number five prospect in the state. As much as he has here at Michigan on a good football team, has a true freshman. Well, I don't think there's any reason for Michigan to change what they to do with it. One play score. Just <laughs> give it to number six. <laughs> number one here. Here he comes. Let's go down below to Julie Moran about it. Study. Kids as they came out of high school, Brent. Uh, you know, a number of them were sprint champions. Jamie Fields, Jaime Fields right here. He was a sprint champion in the 100 meters. You know, 10-6, here he is playing linebacker. You throw the ball out there. It doesn't take him long to get to the point of attack. Wham, there he is. Hell. And Leggett forced to go to the sideline and kneel down. <laughs> Leggett kneel down shaken too. up. And he is out of the game. And Shane Foster replaces him in the lineup for the Wolverines. Gerbeck, Malvo, Malvo, battling free with a flag down on the far side. You know, the headset, you see the coaches talking there. It's really important to have a guy in the press box that doesn't narrate the game to you. Give you the facts, give you the figures, but don't keep talking to you. Every once in a while, you put a guy on there, and it's, he's like I am, talking all the time, you know? <laughs> you can't have that kind of guy talking to you in the headset. Drive you crazy. Here they are. Be precise, be concise. Give me what I want to hear and shut up. Penalty moves the ball back inside the 10-yard line. I'll shut up, you talk. Yeah. 
<laughs> there is that offensive line, and Everett is a wonderful story. One of the most determined players in college football in the middle of this offensive line. And the Wolverines are now backed up close to their own goal line. The Huskies will be stomping and coming. Gerbeck into the end zone. Incomplete at the 25-yard line. He won a Smith. See, Washington went to a pure zone defense that time. Michigan rolling out, trying to buy some time. They worked down there, had a shot at it. Another penalty flag. Thrown back by the goal line. Who dropped the hanky, huh? <laughs> Stapleton will punt out of the Michigan end zone with Shelley, the freshman wide receiver, standing across midfield in Washington territory, looking for a return. And he may have it at the 45. 40. Down at the 35-yard line. 10-yard return for Shelley. Playing on a very short field here, Brent. You know, he had a return there, but he stayed up inside. He had a kick-out block. Then he jumped outside the kick-out block. Inexperienced at running punt returns. Best thing you can do is keep going upfield with it. There's Mark Brunell. You know, he, he's thrown over 200 yards, three out of the last four ball games, and having his biggest one today. From where they are in field position, with the one play that Eric Bjornsson wants to run, that flanker reverse and throw the pass, this would be an ideal spot on the field. Kralik is in the game, and Bjornsson goes outside to the right. They'll run right straight ahead with the draw play, and Richard Thomas getting his first carry in the game. You know, Bjornsson told us about that play you were talking about, Coach, and he said, you know, we've been working on it for eight games, and we haven't called it yet. If he doesn't call it, we're going to call it ourselves. <laughs> Won't get the chance right now because he's leaving the game, and he was swinging his right arm like, come on, man, give me the ball. See, he's a, he's a converted quarterback. He, he volunteered to play receiver, and he'll be back at the quarterback position next fall. So it's Brunel with that quick drop firing to Kralik a little bit behind him and incomplete. Brunel's pass incomplete. It was intended for Joe Kralik. You Good. can sense Brunel's confidence growing in the pocket. The way he is pulling out and quickly setting up. And you know, because he's, he has the ability to do both. Set up in the pocket and throw accurately. Set up and scramble out if he has to. Roll out if he has to. He's not limited in regard to athletic skills. He's 14 of 18 for 246 yards throwing the ball against the Wolverines today. Thomas across the 30. Richard Thomas, the ball carrier. Put the ball at the, what about the 27 44 yard field goal attempt here comes Hanson he's three for four from that distance coming in you know his brother is the kicker at uh, Detroit had a great year kicking 21 of 26 field goals Brent you really liked him when he was in college I thought he was a Heisman Trophy winner yeah you really liked him uh, Bjornsson is the holder Here comes the 44-yard attempt. He's got it. 
You know, Brent, I didn't think he was going to make that because he, the kicker, Hansen, broke his rhythm. He started to go stop and then kick. Most of the time when that happens, you don't get it done. Low snap. See, everything was off in regard to, regard to rhythm, but he still kicked it accurately. Take another look at that. See the ball down low? Holder does a good job of getting it back up there. Bjornsson does, and he puts it where it's supposed to go, between the goal posts. Thirty-one to twenty-four. Fifty-five points on the board in this Rose Bowl, <laughs> and still a lot of time to go. And they put it in Hayes' hands. This time, Hayes blasts to the 24-yard line. Let's look at the Michigan quarterback numbers right now. 11-22, having a pretty good day. Last year in the game, he was 13-26. Powers. Powers goes back to the left and makes it to the 29-yard line. The Ricky Powers was a starter there, and he injured his ankle, and this is the first game that he's 100% healthy. And I visited with him about it yesterday, and he, you know, he, he gets hurt, Whiteley takes it over, and he can't get his job back. But he said, if I get my opportunity today, I'm going to show that I'm a good tailback. Can't do it on the bench. step out right now with Davis checking in. He gets the call. Davis to the 31-yard line. Here's what I don't agree with, though, Brent. You know, it's easy to sit up there and second guess, but when you've got a horse that's running and really running hard, keep him in there and give him the football. I'm going to give Moeller one little pass on Wheatley because when they set up to return that kickoff, he was not on the field this last time. Toomer was out there. Yeah. We'll get a check. That's enough rest. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough Your rest. coaches are all alike. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you get a running back that's really hot, just like a quarterback that's hot. Just give him the ball. He maybe he's banged up. He's well, that's what I was yet. wondering. However, he's got the helmet on there on the sideline. Now Powers. Gerbeck. Gerbeck has time. Throws to Alexander. You know what they're doing right there? They run a one-man pattern. Impossible to get any pressure on the quarterback. One-man pattern working back right here. You'll see that everybody else stays in right here. There isn't anybody else going out for the pass. They're just going to all block. We defy you to get to our quarterback. Now watch him work back into that zone. Mason and Fields are lined up defensively on the same side for the Huskies, and they were ready for Davis. And Davis got to the 44. Ben Davis, the ball carrier. For you Washington Sid fans who may have joined us at halftime or a little bit later, Walter Bailey injured a shoulder in the first half, and it's unlikely that he will return in this game. Reggie Reeser, number five, is the cornerback. He is on the wide side of the field. There he is, and he has held up quite well. Thank you. They're coming after him. Underneath the Smith, and it was Reeser who hit him first with Pacor coming over to clean up on the tackle. Real good job by Reeser releasing the slant pattern when the inside, as soon as he saw it thrown, he released back up inside and makes the tackle. Good job by Reeser. Now Gerbeck hit his last third down in this series. McGee scored a big touchdown for Michigan earlier, and you would have to think that the Wolverines want to get their tight end back involved in this offense as Wheatley returns. Wheatley and Toomer check in from the sideline. So McGee will line up and come in motion. And Wheatley, no surprise, and far couldn't get him down. He got the first down off a second effort. 
He has gained better than 200 yards, and yet this one may be the most important of the game. He may be a little bit short. This time, they just go ahead and draw trap it again. See, and the, the Hill, I think that's Butler that came down inside there and made that contact. Look at the effort. Look, at he's not a track man playing football. He's a football player. Here it is again. Now, see him find it? DeMarco Bard is 75, has him. He runs out of that. He's still not down. He works down. He's a little bit short. His knee was down, down. and they spotted the ball, ball and here. so it is just short, and the Wolverines will punt it. I think it's a good but decision. But Wheatley is staying on the field. Wheatley is the up back in this formation. And Butler sees him defensively. Now both Butler and Hoffman point out that Wheatley is on the field. And so as a result, the Wolverines will punt. And Shelley makes the fair catch at the 17-yard line. That was a good decision to go ahead there. You know, the fans want him to go for it, but you're only one play out of the ball game at 31-24. Go ahead and punt and play defense. That's dropped. Kaufman squeezes through to the 23-yard line. See, they're given the opportunity of the offensive line to put some weight forward and just come off the ball and nail, nail people in their zone of blocking scheme. Like that time, they just came off and he ran back behind the nose guard. Big Lincoln Kennedy, number 75, leads the offensive line up. He's the tackle. Looks like the moon coming over the mountain, doesn't it? <laughs> Lined up on the right side, and Brunel sprints away with Stanley in pursuit, and he fires complete. A catch at the 34-yard line, and now it's being waved off. Now the other official comes over and waves it off, and a penalty flag came flying also. Did he go out of bounds and then come back in, Dick? I think he did here. Look to the left-hand side of your screen. See, he's out of bounds right there. You can go out of bounds and come back in in college if you're knocked out of bounds, but you can't do it if you're not knocked out of bounds. It was a nifty move, nevertheless, by Shelley. Don gets it explained to him. Penalty nullifies the play. So a very costly penalty in this situation. They're eating up some clock time here. It's taking a little while to get this one off. Third down. Brunel slips, regains his balance. Dyson's got him at the five-yard line. He lost his balance pulling out, and he just could not avoid the bull rush. See, that's the one negative to that pedal technique. See, he's left-handed, and he pedaled without turning his shoulder to sprint back, so he could see better to his right that time. Couldn't do it. See, he's a left-handed passer. He comes straight back. Now, see, he stumbles right there, regains his balance, sees Buster Stanley, number 60, flushes him. Wham! Here comes his partner, Matt Dyson. A 16-yard loss. Wardell must punt out of the Washington end zone. Alexander at the 41. Got 45, it. he's got an alley. Alexander to the 13. A 29-yard return off a 34-yard punt. See what he did. First off, it was a lousy punt. See, the coverage couldn't get there. But what's what he does? He attacks the coverage people. They don't come to balance, see? They're still running up. Matt Jones doesn't come to balance. See, they're reaching for him. And he just goes right up inside. He's averaged over 13 yards a carry all one year. And punt returns, you can see why. The courageous punt returner. The chance Michigan's been waiting for. Alexander's a slot man to Gerbeck's left. Wheatley's in motion, and there's movement all over, and the Huskies are claiming that Jenkins moved. And they're right. <laughs> Big Grizzell. 
That is a costly penalty down there going in. It'll make it first and 15. He's just a red shirt freshman, just a little guy at six foot seven, 298 pounds, and Don James liked that call. Here he is, there's Trezell. I saw him walk by yesterday in a, uh, over there by the swimming pool in the hotel. That time. It looked like a tank coming by. What's he gonna be when he grows up? <laughs> look, at, look at that guy. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to play in front of him. Musburger, you could handle him, though, couldn't you? You could handle him. Yeah. <laughs> Go back. Wheatley with that inside shuffle pass to the 15-yard line, and this will still be a long way to go. They've got to get inside the three-yard line for a first down as Tommy Smith, Red Wheatley on the play. Here's Drizel Jenkins, number 77. He does a pretty good job there. He's walling him off. Now he has Jaime Fields outweighed by 100 pounds. <laughs> That's a pretty good mismatch. <laughs> I want you on my side, Brazil. Burbeck floats one to the end zone, and Alexander and out of bounds. It will now be third down for the Wolverines with the ball at the Washington 15-yard line. Tough to run that kind of pattern that when they go zone on you. See, they backed off and played zone coverage, and it's tough. It really is tough to drop it in. As Sid Gilman used to say, drop it down the stovepipe right down there. Just climb the ladder and drop it down the stovepipe. Couldn't do it. And Alexander's shaking up. Smith and Hayes, the wide receivers, along with Toomer. Gerbeck has three wide receivers. Gerbeck incomplete. Toomer and McGee were in the neighborhood, and so was Reggie Reeser there. Somebody made a mistake there. You don't want two receivers at the same uh, uh, spot in throwing a pass pattern because what you do is you draw other defenders. Here's Toomey, the freshman from Vallejo, California. He has bump and run coverage, does a good job of getting underneath it. See, he gets up there, but... McGee had worked over on a, like a tight end scene pose down there, right into him. Too many people shaking hands in the same area. A 32-yard field goal attempt for Peter Alazovic. <laughs> Timeout is called by Michigan. Alazovic is two for five from this distance. Oh, it's not a gimme. It's does not a gimme. that hurt yeah. to use a timeout and a field goal, goal attempt yeah. because they might have been attempting a fake and they saw something they didn't like down there. Tony McGee turned around and called the timeout and Moeller. Field goal attempt by Alazovic. No good. Michigan with a first down at the Washington 13-yard line, and they failed to score. That ball hit the upright. They had to take the four feet, 10 inches out of the goalpost. This would have been good. Here comes the ball. Freeze it right there. You, oops, see, there it is. On the other side, it would have bounced in. So now it's Brunel and the Huskies leading it by seven. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. The toss to Kaufman. Fumble! Michigan indicating they've got it. They've got it. He recovered the fumble, the first turnover of this Rose Bowl, and it's costly. Don James pats him on the shoulder. Many different approaches to take with the back when he fumbles it. Sometimes you get mad at him, sometimes you don't. Coach James just pats him on the back and said, hey, let's get ready to play again. There it goes. Actually goes out of there before he gets hit. That happens when you lose concentration on the football. 
Now remember when they had a first down at the 13. The big tackle moved and cost them five big yards. Now it's Wheatley. Wheatley breaks the first tackle. For the five, touchdown Michigan. Oh, what a day he's having. 24 yards for Tyrone Wheatley. say I told you so but when you've got a guy running the football run him run him and run him a good eye draw play just a straight draw not a draw trap got a fullback lead block right there poor tackling by Clifford right there Shane Powell a poor course to the ball as a safety speed up in between Amani Toomer gets a good block downfield touchdown 15 carries 235 yards he ain't finished yet <laughs> Well, the Wolverines and their fans hope so. Washington would like to see him slow down a little bit. I tell you what, we ought to hire Bo out to go around the country and talk to running backs. He'd make a hell of a lot of money, wouldn't he? <laughs> see, that's unusual. Michigan is tied with somebody. <laughs> yeah, two in a row. <laughs> Bo, where were you when I needed you? God, God. <laughs> game plan of draw draw trap quick passing has really helped the running game last year they came in here and they didn't do a very good job 72 yards rushing they made that in the first quarter Eric Harper will kick off for Michigan number eight Napoleon Coughlin and number 42 Jay Barry are deep for Washington coaching all the time coaches always talk that's Les Miles the offensive line coach he's telling them hey guys I like that draw block and let's just stay with it we'll quit draw trapping just run straight draw blocking just like a coach you to do it now it's Barry Barry Woo. to the 28 yard line and it's Washington's turn and you can see the numbers, folks. It Fifth. says it all. Fifteen carries. See, he's not tired. Of course, he's run a long ways, but quarter milers run that in 49 seconds, you know? <laughs> so he'll be ready. Brunel and the Huskies. Play change at the line. Hoffman could not break that tackle by Hutchinson. Good discipline by Hutchinson, remaining in a position to maintain leverage on the football just in case it comes back out to him. There he was. Good job by Chris Hutchinson. Two-time academic All-Big Ten football player. Getting a little massage back here. Hey, give him whatever it takes. Just keep running. Well, if the next one tonight on ABC is as good as this one, this will be some day to remember. It will be. Take by Brunel. Snaps it off to a diving receiver over here on the right side. That was Damon Berry, who Brunel's was Jay's pass brother. To Damon Berry. You know, their dad is Odell Berry. He played for a number of years at the Denver Sunday Broncos. People was a good football player. Made the stop. Brings up third and three for the Huskies. Darius Turner. They're a little bit late getting their players in. Outstanding performance here. And Kaufman goes out as a receiver. No running backs in this formation. Brunel running out of trouble. Gets past Morrison. And he's down at the 45 with a first down for the Huskies. Geez, where they that time they put the running back in motion like you said Brent he ended up one-on-one -on -one with Chris Hutchinson going down the sideline if he was not flushed and could throw that it was six points all the way 
seconds ticking away here on the third quarter. When you rush a quarterback that can move around like Brunel, you're really, I think, smart to assign a defensive lineman inside just to squat and wait for him to get there. Come back for the fourth quarter. We may have one for the ages after this message and a word from our ABC station. Terran. And what a beautiful fake that was by the young man. Brunel's pass complete to Mark Bruner. He goes to Bruner and he had Kralik breaking free on that dick. When you run play action, you freeze those linebackers inside like this. See, now watch him make nice fake. See the nice fake keeps it in the belly, sits back inside. Now the tight end works over inside there. No one on him like that. See, no linebackers around him. He froze him completely. Good job. Gets his feet back around, finds his target, and lets her go. Ball at the Michigan 39. Turner and Kaufman. Kaufman. A hole on the outside, and Kaufman past the 35 to the 34-yard line. On the desk. See, when you're that quick, you can hit up inside. If it's not there, and you can find a place to slide to, you have that quickness to accelerate between before the Packer can fill it. Good job by Napoleon Kaufman. Second down. We have Bo back here. We, we, we're trying to test his uh, heart operation that he had a few years ago or what? <laughs> yeah, we're seeing a great football game. Brunel. Incomplete, and he was under a furious rush that time. So, Bo Schembechler, I guess my question to you is, uh, how often did you get involved in a 62-point uh, shootout? These are the toughest games in the world to coach. I want you to know, because you're not sure your defense can ever stop the other team from scoring, and you know every time you get the ball, you have to put some points on the board. It is now third down for the Huskies. Third and six for the Huskies. Blitz. Brunel incomplete and interference on Ware. Ware had locked up on Damon Berry, and it was quite clear that it was interference. Quite clear that he didn't see the ball. No need to interfere. Couldn't catch it if he had a ladder. Here's the interference right here. <laughs> he was really working on him. Was... He's exhausted. <laughs> Doesn't look very emotional. Don't you know the score is tied? Just get me back to the Northwest, man. <laughs> this smog and heat and everything down here in Southern California. It's no life for a Husky. Now first and ten. Drop in motion. Turner inside the 20-yard line. Nothing much doing there. Matt Dyson. told by one of the coaches in fact it was Jeff Woodruff that told me the quarterback coach there at uh, Washington that after Brunel came back from his knee injury he became a better passer he became a better passer he concentrated more on that thinking maybe he wouldn't ever be able to run as well again but now he has both better passing and the, the same mobility he had prior to the operation Brunel for the end zone, and overthrew Shelley. Did a It'll good job. Down. Good job of disguising the coverage, Brent. They showed man to man and dropped off and went zone. Good job, good signal calling. Hard for the quarterback to read it when it's like that. Here's the numbers. You can see Michigan yards rushing 255, balanced out by Washington's passing 252. Hey, we, that's the score. 31 31, that's the stats. Time and possession to Washington's favor. Turnover. The one score from uh, Michigan. If Washington does not get a first down, look for Travis Hansen. Third and long 
they have to get to the 10 yard line for a first down. And Brunel stepping to the left fires incomplete Corwin Brown and interference a late flag. He took Kralik down and the flag came flying on Corwin Brown. I think it's a good call, Brent. He got there before the ball did. He had a good break on it and everything, and he really went after the ball, but he went through the receiver too soon. See Kralik coming off. He run underneath. They're playing a double zone, so there's a safety sitting back in there to that side of the field, and he sees it. See, he's there really early. No attempt on the ball either. Just a shoulder pad into him. Not a good play by Corwin Brown. Giving the Huskies a first and goal early in the fourth quarter. Goal line defense on the field for the Wolverines. Turner and Jones along with Kaufman. And it's Brunel sprinting. Won't make it. The Wolverines read it properly. Chris Hutchinson there along with Peoples. Good inside-out pursuit. That Chris Hutchinson, Hutchinson is really a good football player. And I'll tell you, Brunel hurting a little bit right now. He's grimacing. Morrison steps up inside. There's a fake. Now Peoples coming inside out. 90th number 90 working out there. Here comes Ware. He turns him back up inside. Wham! He takes it right there on his throwing arm. His left arm. He took a real good shot. He's hurting. Kaufman picking his way, and he is stopped short by Peoples again. The ball in Kaufman, carried. You know, as I sat up here and looked down on the field, thinking about that first and five on the goal, and, and knowing how tough Michigan is yeah, down inside that five-yard line, I'm thinking, boy, what a good time down. to come with a real strong play-action pass. Now it's tough to throw on third and five down here, really, because the defense has all the edges. One thing they haven't run, though, is the quarterback draw. Real good area to use it. With this kind of quarterback, I'm sure they have it in their offense. I know because I've seen it on tape. They do have it. Tony Henderson shaken up. So he will come to the sideline. Tony Henderson, the injured Michigan player. Well, Bo, you said Peoples was a real good football player. He had a great goal line stand. He was in on all three of the plays. All three of those. They're, they're loaded up with a formation strength to the left side of your screen. See, they're trying to leverage the defense, get leverage. Hutchinson does a good job, turns him back into Peoples. Now he gets the rest of people coming. Look at those white jerseys. They don't want him in the end zone. Good job. Now a 22-yard field goal in tight from the right hash mark. He has missed one of two. No good. No good. The Wolverines dodge a bullet. has checked in replacing the injured Wheatley right now Leggett is the fullback and they use Leggett who powers his way to the 24 yard line on first down so that was the reason why Tyrone Wheatley was not on the field for that kickoff return a short time ago and is one of the reasons why they have been substituting for him frequently here in the second half. He has been magnificent, but he's carried the ball only 15 times. There had to be a reason, Brent. You know, there just had to be a reason for it, and I'm glad I found out what it was. Looks like they're coming after him again. Now Smith backs off, and Gerbeck Fires complete to McGee, just short of a first down. 
Gerback showing real good poise. He wanted to throw the flank or curl outside, way wide to his right. It wasn't there. It wasn't there because the defense had worked out underneath it, so he comes back inside. Good job. You know, Elvis Gerback, and your heart goes out to his Croatian relatives over in Europe. A lot of them have been right in the heart of that civil unrest and horrible war that's going on and difficult to get a hold of his relatives. And here he is in his final college game, handing off to Leggett, goes up over the top for a first down. You, you know, the other thing I would be concerned about now if I were Moeller is I don't have a cinch field goal kicker. You know, I can't think about just eating out the clock, driving it down there, put it in the proper position, and let him pop it through. So that changes your thinking in this situation with nine minutes to go, tied score, 31 to 31, and you're not sure you want to dump all the responsibility on your field goal kicker, who is still immature and not, not ready to do maybe the, the kind of job it takes to win a ball game like this. But he has hit his career-long window open yes, the game. Yes, he has. They First wouldn't be tied and, and Gerbeck hands off to Davis. Davis breaks to the 37-yard line. So the young man with some huge shoes to fill right now as he has replaced Tyrone Wheatley in that Michigan backfield. You know, each time they put in a back and you study these guys, you know, that's not just Joe Schmatz. This guy was the Michigan player of the year as selected by the USA Today. You know, the guy can run. He's got a, that's the fourth guy. They've got some talent there. I thought it was all coaching, Bo. No, well. <laughs> we get on the draw. First down. It's going to be very close. Let's see where this linesman spots that ball. Brent, that's I know. in the uh, Rose Bowl last year. People can watch Desmond tomorrow on ABC. I think he's caught too many balls in the NFL, come to think of it. No, no. So with Dick Vermeil, Julie Moran, and Bo Schembechler, I'm Brad Musburger. Very nice to have you with us on this New Year's Day. We settle in now for the last eight minutes. With the score tied at 31. And Gerbeck calling the play at the line on third and short. He has to. They're in the bear defense right there. He didn't want to go after it. Davis gets the first down. And he has popped at the 45. Fake to Leggett. There it is. There it is. He's got McGee. Got McGee and Same Reese thing. are forced to come over and make the stop. Brent, we just talked about that a few minutes ago. They came with it again, but they didn't use motion to do it. They just lined up in it. You see what I'm talking about? Two tight ends to the left side of your screen. Play action fake now. Safety working away. See, no one hot him right there. There's Jaime Fields. That Jaime worked Sam. earlier for a 49 yard. Touchdown. Be smart, he says. <laughs> now a 32-yard gain. Five catches for 102 yards. Davis. Battling to the 16-yard line. And uh, Bo Schimbeckler, tell us a little bit about Davis. He is running quite hard right now. Well, Davis he's uh, basically, if you line him up, would be the fourth-string tailback. He's really not that. He's a redshirt freshman. He's got a lot of talent, and he's got a lot of speed. The so the um, they have a lot of tailbacks. I don't know of any team in the country that has as many good tailbacks as Michigan. Now what we did was just hurt their recruiting program. <laughs> no one's going to say No, they up. just have to get one more. <laughs> <laughs> they always East, have to get one more. The fellow at East Lansing. I think George Perlis is That's watching right. the Rose Bowl with him. <laughs> Second down. Here's Davis. Good defense. To the 15-yard line, must get inside the 13 for a first down. Reggie Reeser with yeah, Davis, the ball carrier. Reggie Reeser, Davis Scott, along with Jaime Fields. Reggie did a real nice job of coming. He's filling in real well for not having been the starter, redshirt freshman, out of John Muir High School, right here in Pasadena. He's playing in front of his home crowd. No wonder he's playing so well. 
The Huskies have been really tough inside the 20 uh, uh, this year. Burbeck. Caught. Touchdown, Michigan. Murphy. to the tight end more. Second time the tight end has caught a touchdown going to the corner. Here he is. One-on-one -on -one coverage on a linebacker. They were spread out. Wide receivers, tight end inside. Piney Fields, an outside linebacker, has to cover him. Couldn't get it done. Alasovic. Bethard and Ron Vanderkellen got into a shootout. Now it is the short man, and that is Jones, Matt Jones, bringing it up. It hasn't been the quarterbacks, but it certainly has been a running back. Tyrone Wheatley, who's having a back problem, and you can see that they're working on him in an effort to get him back. He's carried 15 times for 235 yards and three touchdowns, one an 88-yarder, which is the longest run ever in the Rose Bowl. I think here it's critical that, that they use high percentage passing. Don't try to get this thing back to a tie situation in one or two plays. Just take your time. Be patient. You got a lot of it, and you have all three timeouts. There's Barry to the 35-yard line. Jay Barry, the ball carrier. Here's another school with a lot of fine running backs we're watching play. The University of Washington. Time, Damon Barry. Michigan. Michigan. The orange and checks in. It'll be second and six. Shelley leaves. Toss and here comes Bjornsson looking for that pass. Bjornsson standing in, fires to a diving receiver, but it was too low at midfield. Incomplete. This one will be waved off. Bjornsson did a good job. He had the post pattern covered. He had the post pattern covered. Now you'll know it was a reverse. It was a reverse pass. They wanted to throw the post pattern down here. The safety stood back there and took it away. Presence in mind because he is a converted quarterback. He goes to a secondary receiver. Real good job of getting it there. Otherwise, it's a wasted play. It ends up being incomplete anyway because he throws it a little bit low. But good judgment on his part. Tough spot to use a trick play. Very Alicia tough. In third and long now. That was a real gutsy call at that moment in this game. Brunel. And he picks it up anyway. And it's Mack. Mack across the 40 to the 36. So Brunel calmly comes back on third down with a 28-yard gain. The young freshman quarterback, cornerback Ty Law made a mistake on this one. See, quarterback looking away, looking away, looking away. Comes back, good poise, good protection. Now Ty Law comes up here, just make the tackle. See, just come up to bounce and make the tackle. That should not have happened. Now, what Don James must be thinking about as we come down to 425 is get his staff ready to call a two-point play. If they do bounce it in, they'll go for the win in this situation. Now it's Brunel. Snaps one off to Kralik. And it's Kralik to the 25 and close to another first down, depending on the spot. Goes the ball to the 25-yard line. We're talking about two-point plays, Brent. You know, Washington is two for three in that situation this year, and that's really good. I mean, that's a high percentage of two-point success. They come down to the final four minutes with all three of their timeouts. Moeller and Michigan used one. McGee, remember, had to call it during what appeared to be a fake field goal situation. Wolverines have two. It's first and ten, and now Washington 
is going to use one. Movement in the Henderson. He was either offside or awfully quick, one or the other. Holy mackerel, did he get off. You'll see it right in the center of your screen right here. You'll see these two people right in here. Watch some quickness. Boom, right through there. Wow, good arm over move. Hey, I don't know, maybe they snapped it out of rhythm. They snapped it early. They snapped yeah. it. The right guard was not ready for the ball to be snapped on that, and he came through the opening because the defensive lineman moves when the ball moves. Now second down. Off the fake, Brunel. Brunel for Kralik, and he underthrew him. Incomplete in the end zone with Ware covering. Well, and that's a tough pattern to cover. They take the outside receiver and run him to the post, run the slot man out and up. That's tough to cover in that kind of coverage, especially, bro. Henderson's play looms ever so large now. Three minutes and 21 seconds to play. Michigan leading by seven. And it will be third and 11 for the Huskies. See, by trying to get it all in one play, though, see, you leave yourself in third and 11. Why not five and six yards at a time? Much easier, higher percentage. Brunel. Brunel fires inside the 15-yard line for a first down. Another huge, but hold on. Shelley grabbed the ball. I think Peoples got that thing knocked out before he had control of it, Brent. You're right. Good defensive play by what Peoples. You see the tail end of this play right here to the left side of your screen. It looks like it's going in there. It didn't go. It went out before Peoples got there. Brunel thought he had it, but good job of stepping up inside, finally under pressure. Oh, he's in. So now it's fourth and 11. Brunel. Brunel trying to run for it, won't get it. Michigan's ball, where is there? Real good defensive series, but there's still a lot of time on the clock, and they can't think and can't assume they've already won the football game. They can't run out the clock. They've got to play good football. I've seen teams lose games by celebrating too early, Brent. I've been involved with them as a coach. So have you, right, Bo? You're absolutely right. They, they've got to move this ball and get a first down or two. Davis battling for a couple of yards as Tyrone Wheatley unable to return because of those severe leg cramps. Washington had two timeouts remaining, as did Michigan. They just used one of them. Points. This is Powers exploding. 40 and out of bounds at the 44-yard line as Ricky Powers comes in with a huge 24-yard run. Just a good eye draw play. See, now the tailback will set one way. Now see him set, pause. There it is, no trap. Good lead block by Leggett right there at the point of attack. Super job by Leggett. He gets through there. Now he's into the secondary. Again, there's only one safety back there. He has to make it. That was such a huge moment for Ricky Powers, who has missed games this year because of an injured ankle. He has watched Tyrone Wheatley move into that starring position. Now it's first and ten for the Wolverines. They're audible. You're in the, that bare defense again. Powers. Powers. Powers trying to cover it up and go down as Smith came in to help Mason. It and almost looked like he fumbled it. it. It almost looked like he was fumbling. That's the problem sometimes with rotating backs in there. You know, a little different mechanics of taking the ball from the quarterback. Two tight ends. He's going to get back there, hand it to him deep. Now it, he's moving it out there. See that thing? He almost knocked it out of it. Fortunately, he recovered the ball. Most important reception of the game. Powers to power. <laughs> powers to power. Good penetration by the Husky defense. There's a football player, Hoffman. Boy, we got a lot of football players in this field today. You can tell by looking at their hats. Gerbeck bringing the clock down. Snapping it on two or three here on this third down. Powers and Michigan forced a punt. 
So as you predicted, Dick, Washington got it back. Now they're going to get it back. Now, what's your feeling about going all out to block a ahead. punt in this situation, you two guys? <laughs> you know my feeling on block a punt. I'll let you talk first so I can well, say Well, it's uh, <laughs> six and one, a half a dozen other. They got a great return well, guy back there. there. If you rough the kicker, it's over. Uh, yeah, you, I, you gotta go for a you gotta uh, go for a punt return and uh, I agree with you. And see then, what happens. And give your give the ball to your quarterback and see you got a chance. Yes, you don't have any timeouts left, but you got a mobile quarterback this to scramble around. For Michigan. Single safety. There's Jason Shelley. Number eight awaiting Jason the punt. Stapleton is partially blocked. Washington takes over at the Michigan. 45 yard line with a minute three. It was a high snap, almost over the top of the head. Not a time to get a bad snap. They came after it. The rush comes from the right side. See the high snap? That breaks your rhythm. Here it is right there. He lays out, does an awfully good job at getting at the blocking point in front of the punter coming from the right side of your screen. Here he comes underneath right there. Wham! Stretches out, does a perfect job. That was Kilpatrick that got in there and got it, number 35. Well, good thing we didn't call that one. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> now Washington is without a timeout. They have a first down. Brunel throws high and incomplete to Shelley. So Mark Brunel playing in his third straight Rose Bowl. Two years ago, he was the MVP. And now he has the career passing yardage record. He'd rather have the points leading right now, I think. Accepted as Maloney had a shot at it. You know, when Damon Mack was crossing over there in behind that, and he the ball was almost tipped to him. And Mola wonders how could he not catch that ball? <laughs> now third down for the Huskies. Wolverines, Michigan defense doing a good job of trying to funnel everybody back inside. Don't let them catch the ball. If you want to run around inside, fine, but don't let them get out of bounds. Brunel, high and incomplete. He had Bruner set up for the first down. He threw the ball a little bit high, and the Huskies are down to fourth. I'm, down. Su I'm surprised the defender sagged off enough to allow the first down catch. You would think they would be crowding that that marker. See, they're sagged off. They're in a double zone, but the corner has rolled off. Hasn't rolled up. See, he's back there. He has help behind him, yet they allow this man to get to the first down position. Not good defense. Brunel snaps it incomplete. Michigan's ball. This feels like beating Wisconsin to you, doesn't it, Bo? <laughs> Getting 38 the, points? Well, yeah, not exactly. Not when you get 38 in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> we win it! I tell you, both teams really, really played hard, but they got after each other, but good. Excellent football game. Fun to present. <laughs> 